what is up everybody welcome back sorry for the short leave of absence there i was on vacation and then i got sick so a little bit of a unfortunate sequence there where i wasn't really able to record anything but hey i'm back and i'm here to talk more about the art majors project because i made some good progress so in this video we're going to be talking about making her green stuff cloak and i've done some green stuff work before you've seen in my other kit bashes but this is by far the most ambitious and the most green stuff that i've ever used in a single serving anyway <laughs> this was absolutely uh, a a daunting task and one that i did not look forward to undertaking but i did it anyway knowing that i needed to do it in order to make a really cool model so here is how i made her massive cloak all out of green stuff the first thing i needed was supplies uh specifically a smooth surface to work on i used a spare bit of plastic card i had lying around a rolling pin uh this one is from green stuff world you don't need to use specific one like that any smooth service will work something preferably not wooden uh some sort of resin or plastic one would be best because you don't want the wood grain getting into your rolling pin business you're trying to make a, a finish a, a nicely finished surface here the other thing you'll need is lots and lots of water i cannot say this enough use a lot of uh, use way more water than you think you'll need because green stuff sticks to everything if it's not separated by a surface of water or you could technically use vaseline or something like that but i didn't want to deal with the whole cleanup after the fact there so i just stuck with good old h2o now after this uh you forget to put on gloves uh so you cut away and put on <laughs> a glove in an attempt to reduce the number of fingerprints I will have on this cloak. It kind of works because I only had it on one hand. I had to control like the camera focus and stuff with the other hand. So unfortunately I still did end up getting some prints on the model, but it's it looks okay and it's not really easy or evident that these prints are there. So I'm just gonna chalk that one up. If you're not recording video footage though, you should absolutely wear two gloves to avoid fingerprints at all costs. Once your supplies are assembled, you'll need some green stuff itself as well. Now, I tried to kind of hold it up to the model and gauge how much I was going to need. I knew I'd be rolling it out a little bit thinner, but I wasn't exactly sure how much uh, I would functionally need to make this cloak. So I just got way more. <laughs> always make more, because you, you can always do stuff with extra green stuff, but you can't make more green stuff that is in the same stage of setting if as other green stuff that has already been made, if that makes sense. So I separated out the green and blue piles uh, after getting rid of the little bit of uh, already potentially epoxied green stuff in the middle channel between the two, just cutting that away and began to mix up the putty. After it was a good consistency, I grabbed a little ball of green stuff and affixed it to the mask of my character to ensure that she had a good bond with the rest of her uh, kind of wireframe and armature uh, situation. And then I eventually got a little bit more. It didn't seem like it was quite enough. So I got a little bit more green stuff and put it on there to really ensure a strong bond with the armature. That face wasn't going anywhere. After that, I took the rest of the green stuff and started pulling it apart with my hands to get a rough blobby shape that I could then roll out. I covered my rolling pin in water until it was absolutely drenched, along with the plastic card just to make sure nothing was sticking, and started to roll out the green stuff to get a nice, flat, even surface with which to mold. If it got to the point where the rolling pin was starting to pick up the green stuff, I would stop, unfurl it, add some more water, and go back in again. Once it got to around the right size and shape I needed it to be to act as a cloak, or at least to test it out, I cut off some of the excess making a semi-triangular shape that would be the basis for the form of her robe. I tried putting it on the model and it didn't seem like it was quite enough material. 
So I went back and decided to roll it out a little bit thinner just to make sure we have all of the drapiness and all of the stuff that we want to have on her rope. After rolling it out a little bit more, I reapplied the cloak to her and started pressing down into the armature to make sure it was following the lines of the armature, sticking to them and creating the shape that I was expecting out of this cloak. There were some natural creases and folds and things like that, and generally I just kept those around because I th thought they added texture and visual interest to the cloak. Except in uh, a few areas where I did try to fix things a little bit more to have it look a little bit more natural. After the cloak was applied, I picked up a flexible sculpting tool to try and smooth out fingerprints or other idiosyncrasies, things that just weren't really looking right, weird presses into the, th you know, there's a lot of imperfections that can happen when you're applying green stuff, and I was trying to smooth them all out. After smoothing out the model to a first initial degree, it's not quite done yet, but we're ready to move on to the next step, which is adding weathering. One of my favorite things to do. So I picked up my X-Acto blade and started uh, picking apart pieces of her cloak, adding holes, tears, rips, shears, things of that nature, to really make it look like this thing was a thousand years old. I tried to make my patterning random, and when possible, I used creases or weird imprints or indentations to use as a basis for my cuts so I could hide my crimes and have those weird looking parts turn into cool weathering. After her cloak was thoroughly frayed, I decided to stick on the little orb while the green stuff was still in it, not fully set in order to give it a nice tight bond and ensure that it's not going to be going anywhere after the model completely dries. After that phase comes some more smoothing and adding a little bit of a chunk of green stuff into the back of the cloak in order to build out a part that had kind of bunched up weirdly and exposed parts of the armature that I didn't really want to have exposed. It ended up kind of working, but I do another fix later there that makes the entire thing seem practically invisible. After that, it's a little bit more weathering with my X-Acto knife and smoothing out those weathers to make them look more old, beaten, and just things that have been there for a while. I still had some green stuff left over at this point in the project, so I did what any self-respecting Adeptus Mechanicus Kit Basher would do and made some more tentacles and mechadendrites and cables with my excess using the green stuff rollers and affixing them from the orb approaching into those weathering holes and that weird kind of notched area I had to hide that crime and create more visual interest coming from the orb itself and establishing a little bit more of her character because she had a lot of cables coming out of her front and now we're seeing where those are coming from and it's establishing the story of this character with visual storytelling just a little bit more to make her entire figure slightly more enticing. After attaching the cables I do a little bit of a final pass of weathering with my tweezers just kind of picking apart some parts of the cloak and making some little pock marks some little holes and things of that nature to just give it a different sense of scale than the other weathering I had been doing with my knife. And at that point, this phase of the model is relatively complete, but this video has already been going on just a little bit, so I want to save the rest, which is adding all of the details, the greeblies, and little things like that to the model to really complete the effect in the next video. So it will end up being a three-part series, but I'm really excited to show you guys that part because it's the part that I'm looking forward to the most. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give a like, comment, a subscribe if you want to see the epic conclusion of my most ambitious kit bashing project yet. And I'll see you guys next time with that epic conclusion. Peace.